pleased to be able to introduce our second speaker this morning, um, Dr. Anuj Bhargava. Dr. Bhargava, since 1994, has strived to improve the health and lives of people affected by diabetes through clinical care, education, research, and technology. Dr. Bhargava is the founder and president of the Iowa Diabetes Research, the largest diabetes research center in central Iowa. He is a practicing endocrinologist at Mercy Medical Center in Des Moines. He's the founder of My Diabetes Home, a personalized tool designed to simplify diabetes self-management for patients and revolutionize clinical care and diabetes education. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Barbara. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a great honor to be here today talking to you all. Um, it's very exciting to be here. Um, to so many people who care about diabetes. So the first thing I just wanted to do is say, you guys are super champs of diabetes and I want to clap you up. <laughs> so, 1994, I was five years old, no, 22 years old, <laughs> that's good. Two nights, and in those two nights, I really knew, knew all I wanted to do with this life um, is diabetes. So since then I've been doing anything, everything I can against diabetes. And that has led to the journey which has been fascinating. Over time, this fight has been reinforced with many things. I started a research center 11 years ago. Um, 12 years ago I got a business degree simply because I wanted to change diabetes. I'm a certified diabetes educator. Um, so many milestones and many things in this, in this charge against diabetes. Um, but there have been also many personal um, uh, stories and setbacks as well. My first nephew got diagnosed on World Diabetes Day. When is World Diabetes Day? Does anybody know? It was just two days ago, right? Yeah. November 14th. So five years ago or so, he got diagnosed on World Diabetes Day with uh, type 2 diabetes and a one c 12. Uh, my wife had gestational with my second and third child. Then she became type 2, and we eventually learned she's the true type 1. So I really have, uh, every single day, all those 24-7, diabetes, diabetes, diabetes. So I'm, this is why I'm so excited to be here. Um, I want to provide value to you. So hopefully you will find things there that you can use, immediately use. And then I want to build a relationship with you all over time that really helps us do what we want to do, which is changing diabetes in Iowa. So I'll walk through this. Um, I'll welcome any questions at the end as well. All right, so the goal today is first, look at the apps. There are too many apps out there. What's, what's out there? And we'll look at something that we made uh, right here in Iowa. Then we'll look at some other local resources that are available, and then really explore a way to build this collaborative alliance. My objective this, this morning is that when I finish, you all are thinking about how can we change diabetes in Iowa? What can we do? We can and we must change the face of diabetes in Iowa. This is the face of diabetes in Iowa right now. About 300,000 people with diabetes. I used to say 210, more recent data, about 300,000. There are many more people who are waiting to cross over, 810,000 people. We spend about $2 billion each year in diabetes in Iowa. And the diabetes tsunami is not going to stop here. It's going to keep moving. My calculations uh, from the national data is we'll have 545,000 people with diabetes 2030 in Iowa, and then about a million people with diabetes in 2050. That's a lot of people. Now, these numbers matter, but they don't. What matters is the patient who's struggling with diabetes. So let's look at my diabetes for 15 years, neuropathy, uncontrolled sugar. On a good day, he'll bring medication and sugars for me. On a bad day, I'll just have to deal without them. And when he goes back home, he still has many, many, many challenges with diabetes, can't take medications, can't remember the instructions. So how are we going to help Mike? How can we help Mike? So keep him in mind as we move forward through this presentation. How do we provide exceptional care to Mike, to the 300,000 people now and the million people later? How are we going to do that? So that's where we begin. I think it's four-pronged approach. Clinical care, of course, strong, good, comprehensive clinical care. Uh, research, um, technology, education. These are the things that I think will help. We need to put it all together for Mike. 
Um, and really, today I'm not going to talk about clinical care. We had a great presentation this morning. So clinical, in case of, in an instant, I'll talk about collaboration. And really, we want to change the face of diabetes. We want to put a smile on Mike's face. And I think we can. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So with that said, let's begin with each of these components. Technology. Technology is the next big blockbuster in diabetes. There's no medication that can take the impact technology can. So we really need to think about technology. And diabetes is the ideal disease state for digital health. So diabetes is screaming for digital health because of the nature of disease. It's 24-7, is data-driven. And the trends in the field, declining providers, growing patients, and the huge costs. Uh, as with any digital health solution, the key is limiting the additional burden and cost, providing valuable data, and then drive better outcomes. And technology can do that. Now, there is a lot of technology out there, a huge number of health apps, and a lot of people have health apps on the smartphones that they may or may not use. Um, in diabetes, you can track your glucose, your activity, your exercise, and medications. I can't give you a comprehensive overview because that will be uh, two days worth of talks, right? I have just nitpicked a few things uh, to, to put together and say what is possible. So the glucose log arena, there are many, many players out there. My Sugar, founded by a person with type 1 diabetes, very passionate, fun, and it's really, I like their personality, I like how they built it. You can track the blood glucose patterns, they provide some education and coaching. They now work with Roche and they can provide the action check meter as well as the bundle cost saving for $40 a month, any number of strips. So that's my sugar. Gluco has made a lot of advances in making glucose data available to the patient and the provider. So it takes the data from the glucose uh, meters and then brings it to the web and then make it available for everyone else. So patients can see patterns, clinicians can review data online, and uh, then they have added food and activity as well. So that's another great platform for, for you to help. Uh, fascinating stuff, Livongo, uh, the CEO of Allscripts, founder Livongo, it, it utilizes data sciences and behavior theories to help patients live better lives. Real-time support and coaching, I have a friend who's on Livongo, and he has set a threshold, and when the threshold is met, he gets a call within five minutes from a live person. It's very fascinating. So, and then they can share data and so forth. So, and then unlimited test scripts. One of the challenges of diabetes is meter strips and they don't get covered. So I'm happy to see that there are several resources now, Livongo, MySugar, OneDrop, that allow the patient to get an unlimited number of strips as well as some coaching for a fairly reduced price. From a dollar strip, things have changed. So consider using some of these platforms. CGM, I was not going to put it today, but there has been so much in news about sensor that I said, I'll just put that in. Today, technology, I was not going to focus on sensors and pumps, but I thought this would be good. So CGM, or sensor, uh, once the patient puts in 7, 10, 14 days, it will check sugars every five minutes and give a nice, um, nice variation of what's happening throughout the day. It does not check blood sugar. It checks the interstitial uh, sugar. The, the fluid in between the cells, and that's where it checks it. So there's always a lag, something to keep in mind, five to 15 minutes. Um, it can then show to patients how doses, diet, activity, all of those are affecting things. So sensors are a great tool, not just for this, as well as some behavioral modification. Hey, I eat a pizza, and for next 12 hours, I'm in 200. There are many of them out there. The two main ones that are without a pump are Dexcom G6 and the uh, Freestyle. And I just wanted to point out some differences. Um, the sensor life of G6 is 10 days and Freestyle being 14 days. The Dexcom can do alerts so when the patient goes low, then the patient knows about it right away as well as can share with. Uh, so my wife, uh, I was in a potluck and I can see her sugar going down and my sugar going up at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and the Libre, you don't get those alerts. Um, but again, there are sensors. We'll see more and more usage of these in the near future as well. Medications. It's such an important part of diabetes management. It, it totally is. And so there are many apps out there. MediSafe is one great example. Dose reminders, refill reminders, even interaction warnings. And then sharing with family and friends. Um, Apple Health Record Integration, and they've done a great job uh, with 4.5 million users. It must be really good, MedSafe. And I think Med MedSafe and Livongo got in a partnership recently too. Uh, they, they don't call it Mango Health, I think they call it Mongo Health. 
So try medications, blood sugars, and dose reminders, all of this stuff. So again, the point is help your patients use some of these things to keep track of their medications. Um, no patient should walk in an ER without their med list. Absolute no-no. How often does it happen? Probably more than half the time. Get their med list on their smartphone. They, of course, will have their smartphone. So not diet, but nutrition management. There are many apps out there. I was trying to lose weight, and I've been trying for so long, and it always finds me back. Right? <laughs> so I used MyFitnessPal for a month. I found it very useful in, in many different ways, and it just helped me at least kickstart the process. So track weight, water intake, exercise, and goals, and they are connecting to the Under Armour family, so biosensors and all of that. There's a whole lot of innovation that can happen with them. Calorie King, I use the site a lot, and I use it uh, with my patients. I'll just, on the screen, I'll, I do shared medical appointments in a group. So if they say I consume this, I'll go to calorieking.com and just, hey, this means um, uh, 40 minutes of walking, 20 minutes of running, 10 minutes of this and that. So it becomes very powerful to them. Oh, is it really worth it? So I use the site um, uh, quite a bit uh, for tracking. Of course, patients can do that as well. Activity trackers, there are many of uh, them out there. Not just steps, uh, distance sleep, but heart rate tracking, some have put in food. And again, all of this is going to start coming together, right? The patient eventually needs that final picture uh, of what's happening with their diabetes. So Mike could use sugar apps, Mike could use medication app, could use My Fitness Pal, the nutrition app, but I think it's a lot of stuff, so there's an application over here. So, Again, I'm very interested in technology, and I really think that's the next, next big blockbuster in diabetes. So I said, what else could there be? So what we did together is we put together Iowa Diabetes Portal. We started that in um, 2011 uh, as My Diabetes Home, and in Iowa it's just called Iowa Diabetes Portal. And so when we think of our mission of changing diabetes and improving the health and lives of people affected by diabetes, how do we do that? What kind of technology do we need? And these are just my belief. This kind of a foundational slide for me, seven years of work. You want something that is all in one and it's patient center where they can track everything about their diabetes. Provider friendly. It's one thing to be just focused on patient. We also need to make sure the healthcare um, providers can get benefit out of it and provide and deliver better care in less time. Data driven. Let all data come together. Everything should be together. And finally, a very, very, very personalized experience to the patient. So these are the different modules of my something. Any any questions on technology? What we have talked through? Anything that I can answer is yes. Yeah, patients with bumps are they integrated? That is not the case. All right. These are the beautiful five things the my diabetes over higher diabetes more we can do. Patients can manually track their sugars. They can make notes on those sugars. Why high, why low, what happened. Um, they can look at these graphs. This is what I need when a patient comes in. It saves so much time when I can see their sugars in a mortal day. They can uh, look at analytics. They can do estimated A1C. Um, we partner with Taipool, a nonprofit, and uh, a bunch of meters now we can put in as well. So Abbott and Bear and uh, some of the One Touch and so forth. And then uh, medication, creating your own med list. We have such great stories. There's a video on our site about a patient who stepped in the ER. All he did was show his phone, and the med list is right there. I have severe back pain. I can't tell you what my med lists are, but I can give you my phone and show you. Uh, no patient in the ER should walk without their med list in. Um, they can know about money saving options, coupons, prescription assistance programs, and drug discount card. If you put it all together, any medication, not just diabetes, any medication they can know what coupons and prescription assistance programs are available. Uh, in my numbers, they track the A1C, blood pressure, cholesterol, or diabetes. And it's all color coded, so you can say, hey, I'm doing good, I'm not doing so well, and so forth. My here is where we, we think of the providers. We, they can track their uh, appointments, make their appointments, their healthcare team, and then take this tool, which I call the Visit Optimizer, which can truly transform clinical care. <laughs> have a great doctor with it. Not an average or good, have a great doctor with it. How do you do that? If you take all your information in, if you're ready with everything, including your question, uh, and share it with your doctor, um, you will have a great visit and your doctor will save time. We have patients report. When the, the doctors looked at these reports, they'll say, how did you make this? Where did you get this? Because it's really 16 years of my challenges. I said, this is what I need to see. I need to see their med list. I need to see their last year. I want to see blood pressure, cholesterol. I want to see their sugars in a modal day format. I want to see their analytics, their radiance, and time and range in the green. 
And so that's what it does. Then all these fitness trackers, all these Fitbit, um, uh, MyFitnessPal, Google, Misfit, all of that, we have connected all of them to my diabetes, to our diabetes portal. So now I can see, and this is amazing, um, I can see their data about their exercise. A patient uh, on Wednesday, I said, you're not sleeping enough. She said, yeah, I'm not sleeping enough. I'm getting five hours, and then on the weekend, what is that? Oh, that's a weekend. 11 hours, it just looks like it. So I can see that I never had that option, right? I'm getting a better window, a better understanding of my patient when I see this. Um, this is really the most powerful piece of this all, is patients are able to connect their data to Iowa Diabetes Poodle. So Unity Point, for example, they'll put in the username and password for Unity Point and get the data into Iowa Diabetes Portal. This is an absolute necessity of us changing diabetes in Iowa. Data must be liberated and made available at the point of care. So now they can get their data nationwide. We can do 60, 70% of EMRs. At a patient moved from Columbus, Ohio. I said, why don't you connect your Ohio, you know, Ohio health system? And he said, I'll do that. Now I'll have data. I don't have to wait three weeks and waste an hour of my CMA time to get data. It can come. It's not absolutely easy, but we have Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, whatever, Medicare, Medicaid, sorry. Um, the top three pharmacies in the nation, we can connect CVS, Rite Aid, and Walgreens. Quest Diagnostics, LabCorp, Medicare, all of those things the patient can have access to. And imagine once they have access, if you had access to it, wouldn't that be neat? So these are some of the EMR connections in Iowa. We can connect to Broadnose, McFarland, most of the Mercies except Mercy Des Moines, uh, University of Iowa, and Unity Point, VA, etc. So again, this power of data could be unleashed and be in the palm of your hand if your patient's connected. So summary of technology in diabetes, this is the next big blockbuster in diabetes. We got to engage, there are so many of them available. We really need to be more familiar and then prescribe or suggest the right apps to the patient. And one option for your patients, which is available in Iowa, not outside, where um, this is available for free for patients in Iowa. All right, moving to diabetes education. Uh, I usually like to stay on time, but I don't even know where I am. What time am I supposed to finish? So you still have some more time. You're not breaking again until 11.45, oh. and it is currently only 11.07. Oh my God, you guys will have 38 minutes of more of my, yeah. then we have time, then we have time. So I'll take questions as well. Yeah, please. So, um, how do patients access the portal? Do they have to be doing it through their health system? Or can they just go out there on their own? Sure. So the question is, how do patients accept, access Iowa Diabetes portal? Um, they just go to iowadiabetes.com and um, there's a portal link right there. Um, they, once they make their account there, that's when they can link their um, account. So going back, they'll just, once they have made their account, they will click on a screen which says connect my portal, and they'll come to the previous screen, and they'll say is it a pharmacy, is it a doctor, is it a clinic, lab, they'll click on that, and then they will next walk through and type in the name of the system. There's a question at the back. So do the providers have to enroll in this program in order for them to link up with the <coughs> provider? Okay. So the question is, do provi providers have to enroll in this program? Uh, right now, it's uh, invitation only, the way we started in Indiana, and we're launching it in Iowa. So again, if you're interested, please let us know. We'll, we'll, um, uh, we'll do the invitation. We can do that. Health system has Epic. Does that stuff merge automatically? So the question is, if the health system is epic, does it merge automatically? I mean, the patient has to put in the username and password, and then the data will come in about a few days, and then it keeps coming. So um, the, it's a one-way transaction. We can't push anything to epic. That takes <coughs> the, uh, the power of okay. the <laughs> All right, thank you for these questions. We'll keep moving, and again, I'll be here um, uh, for lunch as well. So again, the power of data is unbelievable. It means the, we knew, I think just about a year ago, the oil companies are now less valuable than the technology companies. It means data has become the next big resource. But data is like raw petroleum under the, under the surface of the skin. It doesn't matter if you have a whole bunch of it. It's only when it 
it becomes valuable when we refine it and then we distribute it and we customize it to each use case and each need. And then we move the patient from point A, move the uh, whatever from point A to point B. Data has to have the same thing happen to it. I mean, the amount of data means, so we know gigabytes. What's after gigabytes? Do we know? There's terabyte. What's after terabytes? Petabytes. What's after petabytes? It's exabytes. So it's crazy what's happening in healthcare. If we put all the data, healthcare data, in iPads and stack them, right now we'll reach one third of the distance to the moon. One third of the distance to the moon. That's how much data we have in just in healthcare. So again, it's raw data. Raw data doesn't matter. What matters is usable data. And that's what we are trying to do. We're trying to liberate this data. We're trying to democratize the data and then make it available where it matters the most. Right? That's the point of care. That's with the patient's home. That's when you and the patient are interacting. So that's the beauty of this, uh, being able to liberate all of this and then make it work where it should be. Uh, the next part of the presentation will move into education. And the thing that I want to say there is, as we think about education, we think about education for the patient as well as for the healthcare provider. So for the last two years, we've been doing these web, uh, uh, lectures for our group, um, about 20 employees or so, and we focus on different topics. Uh, so we launched this thing called Iowa Diabetes University, and our goal next year would be to make it available for you all to be able to see it on your own time. I think this is the, this idea of pooling resources together. So Iowa Diabetes University is something that's both for the patients to educate and motivate, as well as for healthcare professionals to know more about diabetes and stay updated. So that's going to be coming soon. And if you are interested in any of these, um, uh, feel free to leave the information at the back with, uh, at, at our table, or you can email uh, partner at iowadiabetes.com. So that's one piece, and this is available for patients, for, uh, for you as well, so we will launch this uh, sometime next year. Um, in terms of education, the challenge uh, for educators, what are the challenges? I think when we think of their day, uh, the lack of availability of data is one, uh, one big challenge for them. Patient agency was done, with it, done somewhere else, madness, we don't have the madness. So I think we want to change the day for the diabetes educator and change the day for healthcare professionals by better availability of data. Only a month ago, we went to Indiana and launched the world's first ever diabetes educators platform uh, to about 100 diabetes educators in Indiana. And the same thing we're doing slowly here in Iowa as well. Uh, and that will be available to you all as well. Um, we, can, we are happy to send invites. Um, all of these things that we're doing, um, please know that for patients and well as healthcare professionals will be free in Iowa. Anything and everything that we do in Iowa will be free. Uh, we truly want to change diabetes. Lots of issues with diabetes educators. There's about 32,000 diabetes educators for 30 million patients work, uh, nationwide. Now, most of them are not providing clinical care. So if I count uh, true, it may be half of that. Let's say 14, 15,000. And there is financial pressures and reimbursement issues. And 42% uh, uh, of diabetes <coughs> educator programs operate at a loss. Anybody in this room has a profitable diabetes education program? Anyone? <laughs> Probably not. It's exceptionally hard to do that. And it's going to get, keep getting worse. The Moines landscape has changed. We have several diabetes education programs that have been scaled back. It's just a nationwide phenomenon. And the documentation burdens that the educators have. <coughs> We did a survey to understand the needs uh, in 2018, and uh, they said the challenges are lack of efficiency, inability to personalize, and this time consuming um, uh, to, to use these. And we're not trained to do that. We are passionate diabetes champions out to help the patients. We are not clerks who are asked to create more and more digital junk. So that's a challenge educators face as well. And what we need in the future is platforms that are easy to use, you have access to information, data is well organized, it becomes information, and then actionable information, right? Raw data becomes data, information, knowledge, actionable um, knowledge. All right, so building a bridge. Um, I have my other presentation had the diabetes tsunami, but I stopped doing that with the recent event, so I just still have the slide. Building a bridge between educators and professionals and patients. So this is the Iowa Diabetes Portal for Professionals. This, again, something like this has never been built before anywhere that we know on the globe. So we were the first one to launch this in Indiana, September 21. Dalton and I 
went there to launch that. Uh, Dalton is a pharmacist, by the way. He made most of these slides, so thank you. <laughs> so um, this platform never been built before. Uh, the idea to make education more effective, efficient, and sustainable. How can we take care of more patients with less resource? We really want to transform the patient business, the patient interaction, and above all, transform your day. There should be a platform that should be designed to just help your day better, not make it worse, right? We need a platform that will make your day better. And that's the goal for Iowa Diabetes Portal. Again, all the data that we talked about, their meters and um, activity devices and the medical data, everything in one place, we have to stop wasting time in data collection. That is not what we're supposed to do, right? So stop wasting time in data collection and then just be, just have these patients who are more engaged, more prepared, and then provide them better care, the right kind of recommendations in the moment. So I'll walk you through what this looks like. And again, right now, the way we have started, you can't necessarily register for it, but if you have your email and you're interested, well, we are happy to have you start on Iowa Diabetes Portal for Professionals. So you can see your patient list, you can see your population breakdown, um, the A1Cs, you can look at the type of your diabetes, um, and again, more things will be added. Then you can invite the patient with their first name, last name, phone number, and email. And as soon as you click on the Save button, and I've done this in my practice right there, hey, I'm going to send you an invite. So I click on Save, and invite goes to the patient in their email, and it basically says, hey, accept invitation and share data. Once they do that, they become Iowa Diabetes Portal members, and you start getting access. So what kind of access? You can see there uh, the most important numbers on the front page with trend lines um, and, and make notes about the patient. You can see uh, their medications uh, and uh, the uh, offers available to them, the, uh, their blood sugars, and then the thing that I love, the, the ability to see it in a modal day, this is an automated chart. The one I showed you earlier was entered by the patient and this is from a meter. And then estimated A1C, their sugars in range, this is all available to you. And then their flow sheet over a period of time, um, and um, their care, which doctors are they seeing when, uh, that visit optimizer tool. Um, they also, just um, a week ago, I started seeing activity. They just launched it and didn't even tell me when it was going to go live. And so I'm with this patient, and suddenly activity tab. And now you can share activity as well um, in this. And then the two-way communication with the patient. This is fascinating that you can just uh, have a direct messaging system, HIPAA compliant and secure with your patient. Um, the, uh, I didn't realize the use cases of this. Very good use cases have come up now, like the phone tag. You start saving phone tag because you can do this and then talk to the patient when ready. You can put in instruction. It means being able to see sugars real time. How beautiful is that? I mean, it's just real time. You can see it anytime you want. All right. Who can benefit? We started with diabetes educators, but really nutritionists, pharmacists, nurse, care coordinators, care coaches, other healthcare professionals. Anybody can benefit from this kind of access. And that's what we want to move forward in Iowa. Let's, let's liberate data. Let's let data be an enabler uh, for us. We talked about the Diabetes University that we started in 2017, and um, I'll skip this over in the interest of time, but again, if you want access to the university or the portal, uh, leave us our, the information uh, or uh, the uh, email partner at iowadiabetes.com. Uh, some of the lectures that are available, SCPs have standards of care, complications, uh, diabetes meds, there's an oral med, there's an injectable, and we work with the Drake School of Pharmacy to build some of these presentations. Again, very good quality lectures. Um, patients have many other different ones available as well. We do a webinar once a month uh, for patients, different topics, that's available. Uh, again, feel free to invite the patient there. So this is the summary of education. I think um, there are many issues facing diabetes educator and SCPs, and um, the portal makes the data available and more accessible to all healthcare providers. And then we have an opportunity to learn together. Right? Let's build a flexible, interactive system on demand, in person, online, whatever it is. There's a great opportunity to learn together through the university. And again, this is all available. Uh, everything, we want to change diabetes in Iowa. So really, the cost is not an issue available to anyone, everyone in Iowa. So research, why is it important? What's happening in research? How many drugs in the pipeline? 185 drugs in the pipeline just for diabetes, 185. This morning, I did an interview in, uh, with uh, WHO. Uh, this gal in our research center lost 45 pounds. Her A1C was 10.5 in May. She's on a newer medication, a weekly GLP-1, GIP, and a lot. And 
Yesterday her UNC was 5.8. She lost 42 pounds. And when she was talking about it, I was just listening. It was in my, uh, my office and I was just listening and said, this is fascinating. The research we're doing, the kind of things that are coming our way are fascinating. So research as a treatment option. Research as a treatment option now. The patients who participate in the research have their own benefit. They get the medications, they get the glucose meter serve supply, they get free care, and they get uh, very closely monitored. This patient this morning, she sees our nutritionist every month. So the kind of care you get in research is very different. So think about uh, patients who are struggling with their diabetes, who need more attention that our care systems can provide, who cannot afford their medications. Research <laughs> is a very valid option. So Iowa Diabetes Research, iowadiabetes.com, all of the studies are available there. Broadlands does it, Unity Point does it. Um, uh, University of Iowa is a great center focused on basic science research. There's a lot happening in research in Iowa. So got to keep these resources in mind and think of them as a viable treatment option. Yes, some studies will have placebo, but even those patients do better. We have done, at our center, we, which we started in 2007, we have now done uh, more than 100 studies. Uh, and it's just amazing, fascinating stories. So research as a care option um, is the next thing I will talk about. Um, you know, when you talk about research as a care option, if people aren't geographically close to those research facilities, is, are there still ways for them to be a part of those studies? So the question is research. Um, if they are uh, 100 miles away, are they, can they still participate? So we have patients traveling from many different places, the borders and everything. In future, and I'm, again, technology will transform everything we do, including clinical research. So I, um, I was the PI for a study nationwide where we were doing virtual study at patient's home, where the patient PCP can, uh, can do the physical and the labs can be drawn by Quest and so forth. It will happen in the future, but perhaps not right now. Please. Studies that you are have available. Sure. So iowadiabetes.com um, is where we try to keep them up to date. The website is going through a major transformation, but it's up and live. Uh, I looked at it this morning. But we will have all the studies available there anytime. And any of you who want to remain updated, just drop your email with us. We are trying to get in the habit of once a month sending an email out to a healthcare professional and say these are the studies. We have such fascinating studies. Can you imagine a weekly insulin? Once a week insulin. We, we just got the first patient enrolled yesterday. So it's just very fascinating stuff coming up. How, can we change the course of type 1 diabetes? Instead of giving insulin, 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 can we modify the disease in the immune system? We may have this study next quarter. So just fascinating stuff. Pretty much there's, I uh, mean, unless research was done, we won't have these options, right? They have to be done. Uh, so many of my patients, hey, why do you participate in research? Um, and apart from the benefits they get themselves, they say, I really want to help the future generation. It will help others. The altruism is an important part of the fabric of how we think in Iowa. So the indirect benefit of research are quite substantial. Um, and then the direct patient benefit, they get the medications, um, they, they get the meter supplies. In our center, stipend is available. Study medication, of course, at no cost. And the care and the attention that they get. Fascinating story that happened. Um, again, these are some of the centers right here in Iowa that are do, doing a whole bunch of research. Um, I mentioned those. This is our uh, place, Iowa Diabetes. And, uh, and I kind of went through some of this. Um, so uh, again, we focus on the coordinators and very experienced in our patient satisfaction and I might even call it delightment score are really high because it's our aim to delight the, the patients. Um, and our studies are available on the website uh, and we do a bunch of different studies. So research is absolutely necessary to change the face of diabetes in Iowa. And there are substantial patient benefits um, and just be aware of the research options and offer that uh, to the patients. And lastly, coming to collaboration. So how do we put it all together? Um, these are some of the examples over the last 15 years I've been collecting. Why can't we do this? Why can't we have my diabetes, my way, or the Glasgow experiment with, uh, with diabetes, or the uh, uh, adults uh, project in San Diego? Um, in uh, San Diego, one of my colleagues, and um, is has been part of this project, uh, DULC, I don't know how to say it, but this is a community-based project, technology-enabled, where well, it's not just the physicians and the providers, the whole team, data enabled, and then uh,
peer support and education. So they have patients in the community, they call them uh, promoterites, probably a uh, Spanish term. And they have built some very fascinating examples of what can be done at a community level. It's kind of fascinating. This is what I wanted to show. So they're bringing everyone together. So that's the healthcare team at the top, physician, nurses with the 3G, it might be 5G now, 4G, but, and data driven, they have a registry there. Then they have these uh, promoters in the community. These are patients embedded in the community who get the training and become um, the peer support system. And then of course the patients, and they have published many, many different articles on this concept. Why are we not doing this in Iowa? What's preventing us? Is it reimbursement? I, I think reimbursement could be a challenge, absolutely. Um, I think this is where I say, when we build something together, we got to have everyone on the table, right? Without the payer being there, or the government being there, or the Medicare Medicaid being there, we won't be able to build what I'm trying to suggest. So yes, that's a key value. I mean, who will pay for this? They probably have a rent to support this, but in life, how we'll do it? We'll, we'll figure it out. I think we have enough people that have brain power in this room to figure that out. Then uh, New Mexico, um, the university there started Project Echo. Um, and it's very fascinating. They have all these specialists, started by a GI doctor, now they do it with every disease across the nation. The idea that a specialist uh, pairs with the primary care physician, and the primary care physician in rural Iowa delivers the care. So the patient doesn't have to go there. So instead of transferring patient, transfer knowledge. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so Project ECHO is another great example. Um, question? Um, so the ECHO program works really well. My company is a spoke in the ECHO program with the University of Florida. Um, and um, I get excited about this because it's really, it's going really well and I think it's very possible to do something like this in Iowa for sure. So the uh, Help a Dive Child is our partner and they're the, the spoke. And so they work with the Southwest um, Healthcare Network of Southwest Florida as an FQHC. So those providers, those primary care physicians, they have real-time access to specialists like endocrinologists. Yeah. So when they're right in the middle of a patient care and they come across some complicated case, they can, you know, they can do it through telehealth, they can do it through calls, conference yeah. calls, and get that information. And then our nurse navigator um, is embedded in the clinic, and she's the one then that connects the patients to community resources that we're um, either we're providing and or the community is providing and so that primary care provider is extremely supported from patient care with specialists that they can't themselves bring in they have access to that and they're trained by them to the community resources and, and having their patients be taken care of and connecting them to whatever that, uh, the resources they need so and that includes with help a diabetic child um, they provide the funding to take care of suppl diabetic supplies or equipment for those that can't afford it. Very cool. So, see, isn't it cool? And uh, that there are these models. We just have to go out and look at, learn from all these models and do something in Iowa. I mean, rural Iowa, how are we going to change diabetes in rural Iowa? So, Project ECHO may be an answer. So, thank you for those comments. So, all these examples that I see, I say, hey, how come we're not doing this in Iowa? Right? We have to do it in Iowa. Don't we have diabetes here? Of course we do. Don't we have challenges? We do. So I think today, by again, many, many viewers remember, we really have to change the course of diabetes. And this is the room that can get it done. We just have to pool our resources together, come together and build something. So um, I'm a little crazy about the future. So I have a 2031 vision. I have a 2025 vision for Iowa, um, the diabetes in Iowa. So let me share what, um, what I wrote uh, as I think about changing diabetes in Iowa. Um, the vision would be to transform diabetes management and improve outcomes for Iowans. And so the hard outcomes, improve the outcomes for Iowans by creating a best practice standard um, of care model through a statewide collaboration. So we want everybody involved. This cannot be done alone. So the vision that I have for December 31, 2025 is this. It really establish Iowa as a global leader in diabetes care. Right, we're talking about Glasgow and Echo and this. Let other people talk about Iowa. Do you think we can do this? Ah, mm -hmm. oh, we can do this, right? <laughs> yeah. So really, this is the vision I'm pursuing. I mean, we're starting this and 
lot of things will happen in the next coming years to really change the face of diabetes in Iowa. And it really is, is to, again, cannot be done without certain key attributes. What are these key attributes? Mike. You always need to keep Mike in front of us. It's patient-centered. This alliance should be all about the patient and improving Mike's outcome. Great doctor visits, no ER, no hospitalizations, good quality of life. So patient-centered alliance, inclusive, everybody, everybody working together. Um, there's, if you want to truly change diabetes, we have to figure out a way to collaborate. Um, and I'll say, who are the stakeholders? All of you are stakeholders. So this is a call to join forces. Um, data enabled. This is an absolutely critical attribute of this whole thing. Let's liberate the most powerful resource, right? The industrial revolution <coughs> happened because of oil becoming, um, you know, gas and get the automotive industry. Our lives were transformed because of oil. And we are at the same stage with data. Our lives can be transformed with data. So this alliance should be data driven. All relevant data available at the right time to the right person in the right context. Data should be an enabler. And really with the goal of establishing Iowa as a model of care nationally and globally. So stakeholders, everybody, it's patients, healthcare providers, physicians, uh, clinics, health systems, payers and insurance companies, employers, diabetes educators, pharmacists, the government, the Iowa Department of Public Health, the nonprofits, the care coordinators, grocery stores and pharmacies, the media, everybody has to come together to do this. So again, it's a little crazy and out there, but that's what we want to do. If you want to do something together, if you want to change the face of diabetes, if you want to help Mike, if you want to help those 300,000 people, the million people, we got to act and act together in a very strategic, concerted fashion. So please, um, and, uh, let's, let's figure out ways to collaborate. This I've talked about already, so I'll skip that. These are some of the things I talked about. Um, how, what, what is meaningful collaboration? There are many different ways we could start. This is some of the immediate uh, things that could happen. So um, again, we need to bring a, uh, we are uh, making a local resource directory. So one of the things as a start, um, in quarter one we'll launch a local resource. Let everyone be aware of where the diabetes educator is, the foot doctor, the eye doctor, all of that. So we are making a local resource. And if you want to be part of that, please let us know. Um, at um, by either the email or uh, if you want to participate in the alliance, uh, there is this tiny URL uh, that you can go to tinyurl.com slash Iowa Diabetes Alliance. Put in your information and how you want to be uh, involved in the alliance. Um, and also, we'll, if you give us local re resource information, we'll feature you as well. Um, combining education uh, efforts. Um, quarter one of next year, we'll start meeting uh, as um, whatever we want to call it, but Iowa Diabetes Alliance, uh, let's get together. So if you're interested in being part of those uh, in-person meetings or online, we can do any of those. So it's, again, one of those things, and we'll keep you posted. Um, I expect that we'll have uh, two meetings uh, somewhere between January and February to kind of start saying how we're going to do this. Whatever it is, what are we going to do, and how are we going to do it? So please get involved. I think this is the slide you've been waiting for. <laughs> All right, we're getting there. Yeah, we still have time. Am I speaking fast and, uh, yeah. Hey, I'm passionate about this stuff, so I can. Uh, all right, I, uh, let me do this. I'm going to uh, do this at the end. Let's let's see um, questions at this point. What kind of questions do you have? Go ahead. Is there a cost for the patient or the provider for the portal? So the question is: Is there a cost uh, for the portal to the patient or the provider? So outside Iowa, uh, the portal for the patient costs $40 a year. Inside Iowa, it costs nothing. Our research center has done very well and is able to support this. So there's no cost to the patient in Iowa. Not just central Iowa, any Iowa zip code. And there's no cost to the professionals. Please. Is it just a website or is there a mobile app? The question is, is it just a website or a mobile app? Um, we used to have an app. We still have an app. We are killing it at the end of this month. <laughs> uh, no, let me take that back. We are removing it from the app store at the end of this month. Um, but our mobile app, we, we wrote everything um, uh, new uh, early this year. So we started the uh, MDH or Iowa Diabetes Portal in 2011. 
And over time, technology gets old. So early this year, we just invested a lot of time, nine months, and a whole lot of work was done. So we relaunched our diabetes portal, and it's extremely mobile friendly. We found that the usage of the web app, so now it's on any device, right? We had our iOS app, so it only iPhones could use it. Now, any device you can use it. So it's the mobile experience is very good, and will continue to improve. So that's why we took off the app. So the question is, do we choose the patient in research? And can patients who don't have insurance and are not citizens, could they participate? So uh, the choice is by the protocol. There's a lot of criteria. Hey, you want someone with type 1, A1C between 7.5 and, and 10 and a half, taking this, 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 and not this, this, and this. Um, the, uh, but any patient could be considered. They can go to iowadiabetes.com, just uh, put in their information. Um, so that's the easiest way to do it. And when they connect to our diabetes portal, then we can even better qualify them. We do not ask for any uh, social security numbers or citizenship, et cetera. So that's not an issue either. So best thing, I think, is to have them register. But um, again, we haven't done it. We've been doing research for 11 years. We've been published in so many amazing journals, so many articles. But I don't think we've done a great job of saying, hey, we've been able to build something really, really neat here in Iowa. So we'll do a better job of communicating that too, what kind of research studies. Um, what's coming up is very, very exciting. Um, so, but hopefully that answers your question. They can self-refer, you can refer, and we'll do a better job of communicating. It was another hand submit. Great. So how are you handling um, the real-time data that you So what do you do about real-time data? I think that's a frontier we'll have to address too, right? I, uh, once I did the Iowa Diabetes Portal, and I am not an educator, the platform is, no, I'm an educator, but not on the platform, let's say. So this patient, on a Saturday morning, and I'm just crazy about the site, so I go ahead and this uh, patient had this thing, hey, um, and he's a very mild-mannered, great patient, so he said, I have been out of my strips for five days, and I've been trying to get in touch with the clinic, and wherever he was lost in the system. And so in the morning on the Saturday, I look at that, and then I uh, go to my uh, thing from home, and I find that, yes, that's sitting there, and it was between me, hey, what do we need to do? And it was back and forth. So I just, right there, I faxed it in. But I, after that, I realized, no, no, if he's realizing on that, that's not what this is right now. So it's not real time. So we'll be building some automated tools which will uh, sense what they're saying and give them the appropriate information. We'll also have, hey, I'm out of office kind of thing. So we'll have to deal with that too. Absolutely. Once data comes in, it will bring its bring his own problems too. Absolutely. Please. What about the interfacing with the EHR? So if a patient's logging their glucose every week and they bring it into the clinic and show you the phone, how do you translate that information to the EHR? Without data right. So here's the story. So my patients of my diabetes home sometimes will share their sugar. So they will email from the site. It will go through our fax machine uh, and come up. And then one of my educators and Don is there and JB uh, and they'll type. And I said, no, 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 you can't do that. It means you can take electronic information, turn it into paper, and then turn it back. And then I'm saying, hey, who would do that, right? So what Jamie, Jamie is our pharmacist at the clinic, what she figured it out, amazing, means we, um, so what we do right now, it's not optimal. The optimal would be the data comes both into EMR as well as into IODIV's portal, and it's all there, right? That's the optimal use case, but to deal with EMRs and do a push back that way is, uh, I think we need something from up there. <laughs> we need another 20 stories up. So, but now what she does is she just takes that log that I showed you, she copies and pastes. So what, uh, it pastes very well so I can see the trend. I can say in the morning this is high, at lunch this is not uh, low, etc. So we can do that trend, so at least I see the table, the modal day table. I can put in the graph and all of that. Uh, that's challenging, but we'll figure out ways. 
But I know that that's an important piece we have to address. When there's one more portal, it has to add substantial value to my day. Otherwise, how do I use it? So we are very acutely aware. Uh, Jamie, the other thing she noticed very quickly was, I have to do much less phone time. I'm not doing these phone time with the patient. I call the patient, he's in the middle of something. I give a message, he calls the clinic, and now he's on, uh, on hold for 10 minutes, 12 minutes, and then he reaches my thing and I'm not there. So phone tag was another cool thing. So great thoughts and questions. These are some real life things that are happening, please. So how many uh, patients do we have enrolled in the portal? Nationwide, about 32,000. Uh, in Iowa, somewhere north of 1,500, I think. And the ones that are connected to us, about 500, through the whole connection, uh, 560 or something. So that's where it is. And any technology you have to learn, it has to provide continuous value for any agent. So we have to figure those things out. If technology is going to be the next big blockbuster in diabetes, it will have to be, um, it will have to figure out how to keep the patient engaged and motivated. So, as I say, an engaged, motivated, activated patient is absolutely necessary for good diabetes control. How, I mean, it's one thing to say I'm motivated to run three miles a day. It's another to say I've been doing that for the last six months. They're absolutely very different things. And technology will have to figure that out. I'm assuming you're the PI for these research studies. So do you also have to follow, are you, as the endocrinologist, do you follow these patients for their diabetes also? Or can you okay. have other? So the question is, um, uh, you assume I'm the PI, PI, PI. Um, <laughs> principal <laughs> investigator for these patients, yes, I am. Uh, but the patients uh, have their own physician. We do not establish a clinical relationship. And we are very mindful. We means even if it's a blood pressure medication, if it's a blood pressure is high, we are not going to change that. You have to go to the physician. We, we, do very, we, are, we can do a lot in the glucose arena for the patient, but that's the only thing we can do. We can't step out of our boundaries. So. Go ahead. So the question is, can the portal be translated into any other languages? Uh, not as yet. It's on our uh, wish list. Um, we are very interested in the, uh, the uh, Spanish version. We are very interested. We have now uh, started seeing Spanish patients in our clinic. We have a full-time person who, who uh, will translate and help with that. We have some evening staff who does Spanish. We are building a partnership with one of the Latino clinics. So we do want to go in Spanish and then move on to um, some other languages too. But probably it's, it'll take us a year or more to get there. Other questions, please. From the technology standpoint, I'm a dietitian, and I'm curious if anybody in the room is able to bill for telehealth. Um, you know, I think of, I'm in um, rural Iowa, and I think of like a Medicare patient, I've got to sign an ABN, and how can I do this? via telehealth or build Blue Cross Blue So the question is, and this is a great question, and hopefully there will be someone in this room who will be doing this. Now, we say telehealth and telemedicine and all of teleeducation, but if there's no payment model for it, how do we justify it, right? So uh, the question is, anybody doing it, she's a nutritionist, dietitian, is anybody able to bill? As yet, has anybody billed for remote monitoring or telehealth or telemedicine or teleeducation? Could you speak a little bit to what you have done? We don't have it with nurses, but we have a relationship with the University of Nebraska Medical Center, and we are at one of their telehealth sites. They have just a few in Iowa. So Dr. Leslie Island actually sees patients via telehealth in Denison, and she's in Omaha. Okay, great. And so we have that great. relationship. And I think that they're waiting for the 2019 Medicare rule, final rules, but apparently they're something that should be, they're hoping that will work where she can actually correspond with our physicians via phone and that they can bill for that. Like if yep. one of our family practice e doctors has a patient that they want to, because we're a real health clinic, that they can discuss and actually Dr. Island could bill for her time corresponding with our family practice to kind of get patients maybe started on a management I mean, her schedule about three or four months at our clinic to get to actually see her because it's taken off that much. We've been doing it for a couple of years, probably two, two and a half years, and it's 
been amazing. Patients that could stay at Omaha right. are getting into chronology services in medicine. Yeah. It's coming. I think it'll take time, but the CMS rules were pretty uh, powerful when they came up with. Uh, I mean, some of them were coming in January 1. I was very excited about the billing coding rule, but it's pushed down to 2021, but there's a lot of these. They are definitely going to start paying the remote monitoring, which is a really cool tool where a certain healthcare professional doesn't have to be a physician or nurse practitioner. They can bill for, I believe, you have to do 30 minutes in in getting, procuring the data, which with something like this could be extremely easy, and interacting with the patient, and then you can bill for that. Uh, so that's already there. It's just that I do not know why healthcare systems take so much time to, what's available, we're not even using that. So remote monitoring is, is a payable um, uh, code. Let's see, where are we now? We still have time for questions. <laughs> what else? Sorry, go ahead. One more time. Does the portal also have capability on sending text reminders So the question is, does the portal have the capability to send text reminders for appointments? Uh, it does. When they are making their visits in the MyCare platform, they can choose to send information. We, I think, right now we do emails. Um, one of our other platforms uh, for research, patient qualified, has a text uh, message capability. We just haven't put it together because uh, we want to make sure when we do it, it's all HIPAA compliant and secure and all that. Um, so email is available, text message we have done on other platforms. We will bring it to this uh, probably sometime next year. Yeah, Dr. So uh, maybe we'll take the next couple of minutes to do something. All of you have a writing instrument in front of you. So why don't you write a e one line or two? Oh. How, how would you collaborate outside your day-to-day, -day, not your day-to-day? -day. How can you collaborate outside your day-to-day -day in changing uh, diabetes in Iowa? What would you do? So let's take two minutes to do that. And then you can send that to me if you want, but at least write it for two minutes. Thank you for that exercise. Um, if you feel that this is something you would want to pursue or explore, um, Take that paper, put your name on it, give it back to us at our table, or go to that tiny URL and send it to us through that. I, I think, uh, again, uh, the aspirations are huge and big and uh, crazy, and uh, you know, they could call the big, hairy, audacious goal. That's what we have, a big, hairy, audacious goal in front of us. Um, and I think it will only be achieved if somehow we are able to align our forces together and our passion together. So let me conclude this presentation. Um, Diabetes has been and will be a major health issue in Iowa. It's not going to slow down for decades to come. To change diabetes in Iowa, a four-pronged approach um, will be needed to improve the outcomes and to establish Iowa as a leader in diabetes across the globe. It requires technology that is patient-centered, provider-friendly, and data-driven. It requires education both for patients and for healthcare professionals. It requires diabetes research now, for now and for the future. And it requires this collaboration. We, uh, this is the call to action. Let us all join forces to change diabetes in Iowa. We can and we must take action to change diabetes. Let's change diabetes together. Thank you for your attention today.